hi guys welcome back to my channel so today's video is going to be about how i made this proboscis monkey um it is for sale over on my patreon beforehand so if it hasn't hasn't already been snapped up over there it'll be in my shop at creaturesandnat.com uh, payment plans are also welcome so just um, shoot me a message on there and um, let me know and i'll tell you how to go through the process but um yeah he's a pretty big dude um, you can obviously seat him down so he's smaller, but he also stands, uh, which makes him pretty big. I wanted to do something a bit different because I haven't done, um, too many primates before. So I've done a gorilla, so I wanted to do something different and something with a weird face as well. And you know, maybe, um, with creatures that, well, with animals that people don't really know much about either, so or they don't know they exist, so I like to pick things that are a bit different. Uh, so he's got a sculpy face, um, he's got a ball and socket armature inside, so you can pose him. Um, and also it's obviously faux fur, and the hands are sculpted out of cost clay, so they're gently poseable as well, um, which is pretty cool. I hate using cost clay, <laughs> but um, I think it's kind of worth it in the end when you can sort of gently pose things. Um, his feet are also made of cloth clay as well so they can also be posed. Uh, he's got a long tail as well um, which also helps with stability but uh, yeah overall pretty happy with the way he's turned out so uh, if you want to know how I made him then uh, keep watching. Alrighty, so I am starting off with a face that I sculpted out of Sculpey Original. You can see that sculpting video on my YouTube is one of my previous videos, so I go through the whole process of how I sculpted this, so I'm not going to include that in that video because there's our own separate one. But this is basically what I'm going to be painting, so I usually prime my pieces before I apply any paint. That also includes painting on resin or polymer clay. So I usually use a canvas primer and it's by the brand Derivian Matisse and it kind of provides a good little tooth to paint on and make the paint stick to the, to the slippery surface a bit better. So this paint job is going to require a couple of layers of different types of paint because the proboscis monkey skin is kind of mottly and has a lot of different colours in it. So always look at some reference images before you start doing anything. I like to study what I'm making and sort of pick out some colours where I think I'll need and start mixing up some colours and just having a go. So I'm starting off with like a really light beigey colour skin to, be to begin with as a nice solid base and then I can start building up on that mottling colour and adding some more of those reds and browns to the face. So I'm using a combination of different brands of acrylic paint. It's just a water-based acrylic paint, nothing too fancy. And it's one of them's by the brand Chrome Acryl, and another one is again Derivian Matisse. And they work really well together. I haven't had any problems with these types of paints on anything really. The golden paints, um, I have had a little bit of problems on some resin. They just don't react too well I've found but um, I like to use sort of smooth runnier paints for all of my work so I'm using a combination of like a mustard yellow some beiges white and red oxides along with a burnt sienna color and I'm mixing them all together to create all of the colors that I need and the modeling that I need and I'm also highlighting all of the wrinkles that I've sculpted onto it previously just to highlight them and it really brings that details out.
adding the pastel-y pink color here because I wanted to mute the color and the modeling, modeling a little bit. So I figured adding the, the pastel pink color really sort of dulled the, the really tough mottling that I had applied before and it gave it a nice smoother coat. And then I can start adding a uh, really little bit more of mottling and bringing out all those features that I did before. Finally doing a coat of, it's like a goldy mustard color, which really brought the color together and made it more realistic. Right, so here's the final um, painting that I've done for the face here. I'm going to be painting the ears a dark brown though, but I'm pretty happy with the way the skin looks. Uh, I think it's more, it's really, really realistic to what the proboscis monkey looks like, and I use a lot of reference images to make sure that I'm getting the colouring right. All right, moving on to the hands. So these were an eternal struggle and took so long to sculpt. So they're sculpted out of cos clay and you can find the sculpting video over on my channel as well. You can see how I did all the sculpting for the hands and the feet. They're slightly poseable and they have wire armature in between. So it's a really nice feature that I wanted to include in my dolls, but it just it takes such a long time to do. Hence why these hand, hand sculpted dolls are a little bit more expensive than my resin dolls. Just because all of the features that I include in them, like the movable jaws and the poseable hands just take so long to do. But I think it really brings the doll to life and makes it a little bit more realistic. So for this, I'm going to be painting it black. I don't have any black cos clay on me. I've only got this gray color and like a beigey color because I've got the Kickstarter version. I know the Kickstarter version is not that great and a lot of people have trouble with it being really hard to condition and crumbly. So hence the reason why it takes so long because it just takes so long to, to condition the clay. But I think the result is really good and I do want to try the new formula, which I've heard is a lot easier to sculpt and condition with. So uh, when I get through the Kickstarter packs, I'll get some new ones and give it a whirl, unless I want to send me some. <laughs> um, so that's what it looks like. And I haven't had a problem with painting cos clay either. It's, it really absorbs the paint nicely and um, doesn't peel off when you're bending it. So I'll look at the armature that I'm using. So I'm using a ball and socket armature and it just sort of pops on and off. This is a one quarter size length that I'm doing and the tool that I'm using is just a tool that you use to pop the sockets on and off. It's almost virtually impossible to get the sockets out, out from each other without this tool. Um, sometimes it's hard to even get it done with this tool, especially with these plus joints, you gotta get the armature tool right in the, in the right position to click it shut. And there's only one side that works with clicking it shut. So I always end up putting it on the wrong side. But I have a separate video coming up. I am doing a pre-order for reels or coils of these armatures. So keep an eye out on my YouTube for that video. And um, it will be at a 10% discounted price as well. All right, so the body that I'm going to do is a little bit of a different method than I normally do. And I usually sew my bodies up on the sewing machine and then put it over the armature. But for this one, Again, why it takes so long to complete these types of dolls is I usually felt the body to create like a, a solid base for it or like a shape of the body, like a muscle structure. And that way I can then sew the, so to speak, skin on top of the body and it really changes the shape and makes it more realistic to what, what the doll actually is. So if I were to sew 
a body up on a sewing machine like this, I wouldn't really, really be able to contour the body like I can with this method. It just takes a really long time. So, and it's mostly hand sewing that you have to do with this as well, which is a pain, <laughs> but I think the result is really good. I have heaps of videos on my Patreon if you want to know how I actually do these dolls. I have heaps of videos with how I have felted other dolls. So that includes the Gorilla doll and a couple of the dolls that I've done for the Calgary Zoo. Um, so head over there if you want to know exactly how I do those bodies. So the, for the faux fur, I'm using a combination of two different furs. So this one is a fur that I use for my baby red panda dolls. I had some of this left over. And it's a nice um, orangey amber colored tip with like a, a yellow underneath and it, it worked really well for a base color of the proboscis monkey because that's kind of what their base coloring looks like and then I can add that darker tone to be um, to the end at the end so I basically mocked up a pattern that I made and just cutting out all of the pieces that are going to be this this yellowy orange color I'm cutting it out a bit bigger than what I would normally you need just so I can uh, shape the way the body is and I can sew and sort of, I guess, fabric sculpt the body onto that needle felted body. And this is the grey faux fur that I'm going to be using and it's a faux fur that I've used for my shoe bill. So I'm running pretty low on this faux fur and I think I reckon I'll run out of it because um, I have another shoe bill commission to do. But um, it's a nice grey colour underneath and the tips are a black colour but we're going to be trimming off these black colored tips and just using that under under pile color which is what i wanted and then i'm going to be adding some coloring to that for to blend it into that orangey yellow color so i'm cutting out basically the rest of the body that's needed which is mainly the legs and the belly and the tail area and then i'm going to be sewing hand sewing these all together <laughs> I'm just going to be testing out the body and where the faux fur is going to sit and if I've cut out enough of that faux fur to cover around the belly. So I'm going to be doing the belly first and then I can do all the extremities and all the other little details that need to be done. So I'm just mapping out where I want it to sit and hoping that it, it looks right. So once I'm happy with that, I can start pinning the belly bit together, the belly in the back. And then I'm going to be hand sewing this together. So I pin everything together just to make sure I've got enough of that faux fur covering the body and that it's all symmetrical as well. Alright, so the eternal struggle of the sewing begins. I spent a good week sewing this doll uh, just because it had so many different little parts of faux fur that needed to be hand sewed and matched to the body. So get yourself a good quality thread and a good needle and set yourself in, buckle up and start sewing. You do need to take breaks because I find it's really just tough on your back and really tough on your hands as well to keep hand sewing things so much. So um, I always like to break up my projects in little different projects. So I, like, I either like to go and do some painting or some sculpting or something else. While I'm, if I have a big sewing job to do, um, it just helps you keep your sanity. <laughs>
So the bottom is the last of the sewing I had to do and this is what it looks like once everything has been sewn up. So you can see it's nice and fluffy and is really looking for a trim. But you can see the body is has starting to take shape and all of that needle felting that I done underneath has really put out how a body will look or how the proboscis monkey looks and how it's sort of the skin is sort of wrapped around that um, that structure. So time to give it a trim and this is what it looks like after I've given it a pretty rough trim um, and I've always used the reference photos as well when I'm giving something a trim but once that's done I go over the doll a little bit just to see if I need anything else that needs to be trimmed or if something's stuck or just to make sure everything's looking right and correct and then I can start applying the fur to the face and that's pretty much the last little bit that I'm going to be doing is applying the faux fur and then adding colour. So for this one, I have a video on how I made the part for this proboscis money, mon monkey on top of the head. So head over to my Patreon and you can see how I have done that. But for now, I'm giving him a nice little haircut because he kind of had a mean bowl cut. <laughs> um, so yes, I'm giving him a nice little haircut, making sure everything is looking good and I'm getting all that little bits and pieces of fur that is stuck in there out that need to come out and then once I'm happy with the way that bowl cut looks I can start adding the final touches which is the colouring on the top of the head. You can see it's a kind of an amber, a really dark amber colour so I'm just going in with my brush this time. You can use an airbrush if you like as well but I wanted to go in with my brush because I wanted a specific sort of shade and gradient to it so I thought it was easier just to use a brush instead of pulling out my airbrush as well and I can also get in between and sort of comb it through with that brush. One thing to do that I always do when I'm adding colouring to faux fur is I always always comb it when it's drying and when it's wet. This helps spread that paint around and make it more of a um, blended colour and it also uh, stops the, the faux fur from sticking together as well so in the drying process I know it's a pain but keep combing keep combing it because it really makes a difference when you comb things rather than you just leave it And the last bit is adding some colouring to the belly and I'm just using the same sort of colours that's featured on that yellowy colour and just blending it in a bit more and making it look like it's not just two pieces sewn together. So that's pretty much it for this video and how I made the proboscis monkey. This guy has been already been snapped up, but if you want access to any of my work early, consider joining my Patreon. You get early access to all of my work that I'm going to be releasing. So that includes the hammerhead bat that is coming up very soon. And I am doing a pine collection watercolor as well, which I've had a couple of people asking about. And um, so that'll be available in my Patreon or on my Patreon exclusive shop. But I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned a thing or two. Leave a comment and uh, tag me on Instagram if you make something similar. Or you can check out my shop at creaturesandnet.com. Patreon also. Thank you very much to my patrons for supporting me as well. I really appreciate it. And you can also find me on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok as well at Creatures of Nat. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.